Welcome back everybody, High Tech Lab here. Today we're outside and this right here behind me is our hot tub. Yes, I said hot tub. We are 100% off the grid, yet we still have some luxuries like a hot tub. This hot tub, essentially the story is, uh, we got it, the heating element wasn't working. Uh, essentially the original control board had a relay that went out uh, that took me about five minutes to fix and we got a spa for next to nothing and it worked and we used it for a bit until the other relay failed and actually burned some traces on the board. So because of that, I built my own control panel over here. This control panel has a PLC and about seven relays and all sorts of crazy stuff in there. And we're not gonna get into too much detail on this, but essentially this PLC up here communicates with our main off-grid system and uh, allows this whole thing to work. So in the process of programming that PLC, I made the mistake of running the heating element uh, except without water flowing through it. So after about two minutes, that heating element just decided to quit working because it burned up inside once it boiled away all the water. So as a result, I needed to make a new heating element. I could have bought one, but I didn't like that it was only 4,500 watts. So right here behind me is our new heating element system. And this utilizes two heating elements for a hot water heater. One of them is a 4,500 watt element and the other one is a 5,000 watt element. Essentially, we can turn these on in stages. So I have a solid state relay that fires one of them and the other one has just a regular contactor. And this is all out and loose and stuff because the first time I built this, I used galvanized pipe. Check it out up here. This is the other half of what this used to be. You can kind of see the resemblance. And the problem we had is this galvanized pipe rusted out. You can kind of see some of it falling out there. And uh, we're gonna cut one of these in half and you can really see inside. So here on the inside, uh, this is the end of the heating element that's no longer attached. I'm gonna pour that out. And you can really see there was a ton of rust in there uh, just piled on. We'll put a close up picture in uh, the video, but it's literally caked in there with, uh, with rust. I mean, it's just falling out in chunks. So you can see galvanized pipe is not the way to go. Some of you guys may be wondering how we knew that this was an issue with the galvanized pipe rusting. Let's take a look inside the spa here. Now, keep in mind, this is pretty dirty on the bottom because we may have used the excavator to, and some slings to pick this thing up and put it in place once the uh, pipe was in place. But you can kind of see over by these jets here, they kind of have an orange hue to it. Essentially, the whole spa started turning kind of this orange color. We weren't sure uh, if it was a chemical imbalance or some allergy or something. And eventually we figured out, okay, it's that heating element that's putting, you know, the iron deposits on the sidewalls. This is the, the version two. This is all stainless steel 304 series. So we don't have any issue of rust there. And uh, there's a pump right over here. This sucks cold water or relatively cooler water from the spa. And uh, keep in mind, we're cleaning all this stuff up in terms of wires and whatnot. But that then sends the water through here where it'll go through this heating element, cycle through like this, and then this other hose that's not connected yet will go on this other side and uh, return the water back to the spa. So uh, it's definitely been a kind of fun project, but at the end of the day, um, galvanized pipe was not the way to go because the chemicals in the spa and whatnot uh, rusted that out in no time flat. So learning experiences, sometimes you gotta learn the hard way. Now, uh, some of you guys I'm sure are interested in this PLC control system. Uh, some of the safeties I have are a pressure switch right here. So this pressure switch will thread in here. Obviously I'm still, um, you know, working through all this, but with that pressure switch in there, uh, that communicates back to the PLC and will prevent these heating elements from firing without uh, flow going through them. And then two, I have this temperature probe that right here that I removed, this goes into this fitting. That's the temperature probe that detects the water temperature in the spa. And then I have two more. These are all, all three of these are type K thermocouples. Two more here. And these I pretty much hose clamp on the side of these 
uh, tubes with the heating elements inside. Uh, for reference, let me show you one of the heating elements. I have an extra here in this control panel. So this is the heating element that's in there. Now this one is small. This is only 1500 watts, so that's why it's so short. But these other ones come down to about here. And uh, this one right here actually loops around, so they like fold it in half essentially. And then for safety, um, this is my power connection. I haven't figured out a good way to do this yet uh, without a box. So I essentially connect on the uh, two hot wires onto the element. And then I have a ground wire that I put on the hose clamp to the um, metal body. So all the body is grounded. Um, I'm sure some of you guys kind of cringe when you see that, but at the end of the day, this whole spa is connected onto GFI breakers. So the concern of having, you know, a short or a ground fault and, you know, causing um, electrocution of the people in the spa is pretty minimal uh, because of that GFI protection. One of the other things we take advantage in order to heat this spa effectively is when the generator is running, we run these heating elements at full blast on the generator. So even though the generator is close to maxed out at that point, the Solark that we just installed has a generator peak shaving. So essentially we can program that we want 13,000 watts of load on that generator. And if anything else turns on, it'll taper back charging or even go into inverting mode to make sure that we never overload the generator. So that's part of being smart with the power we have and uh, what allows us to keep this thing nice and toasty warm. But yeah, guys, I hope you found this interesting. This is our off-grid hot tub. This thing is pretty awesome, and uh, it's definitely nice after a long day on the excavator or you know, doing all sorts of stuff here on the property to come sit into a spa that sits at 104 degrees. Uh, it's pretty awesome, and uh, we're definitely happy with it. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. And if you are subscribed, make sure you have the bell icon turned on so you get notified when we have future uploads. Other than that, guys, if you found today's video interesting, comment what you found interesting down below. We'll see you guys in the next video. Catch you later.